Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back again with another video. Today is Plantmas Day 10, so close to the end of Plantmas, and today is a video that I've been excited about for basically an entire year, which is finally filling in my 2021 book bracket to determine my favorite read of 2021. I just hit my 125 book goal for the year yesterday. I'm just going to be looking at the 125 books that I read from January 2021 all the way through to today as I'm filming this video. So the basic premise of the spread is that I'm going to pick my favorite read from each month and fill them into these spaces. And then I'm going to do little mini battles, so January against February, March against April, etc., to determine my six favorite books of the year, and then go head to head again to determine my top three, and then the final battle for my ultimate winner. So I am so excited for this. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, setting up my 2022 reading journal, I am so indecisive. It's not even funny, especially when it comes to picking favorite things. And I just love the concept of the spread as something to help me <laughs> use a bit more of a methodical process to determine my favorite book instead of just humming and hawing and then saying, well, you know, whatever, I have 15 favorite books, so sue me. <laughs> so obviously this isn't a perfect method, you know, maybe in April I read four books that could have all been in my top six, but I can only pick one and those other ones get eliminated that maybe deserve to be further along in the competition. But I don't think there's any really perfect method that isn't also super complicated or time consuming. So I'm happy to go with this to get my favorite book of the year. And I'm excited to go through the process with all of you. I've been waiting to do this since I made this spread. I think it's going to be fun to go back through the year and take a little bit of a walk down memory lane. Remember all of the amazing books I read this year and pick my my favorites. So that is what we're doing. Without further ado, let's hop in to picking my favorites. So starting in January, and to be honest, it feels like January was about four years ago. <laughs> I don't remember it at all, so I'm going to have to flip through some of my reading journal spreads to even remember what I read in January. Let's see. Oh yeah, so I read The Midnight Library. That was our book club pick. I liked that book a lot. The Vanishing Half, that was amazing. Stamped was also really good. I wrote a lot of notes on Stamped. <laughs> Um, what else? Oh yeah, Life on Our Planet, Cast, these were all five star reads. I feel like it's going to have to be either The Vanishing Half or The Midnight Library. <laughs> this video is just going to be a crash course in Elizabeth's indecisiveness. You're welcome. Or I'm sorry, depending on how you feel about listening to someone being indecisive. <laughs> you know what? They were both really good books and it's hard to pick a favorite out of the two, but I do think I'm going to have to go with The Midnight Library. It really affected me. I thought it was a beautiful book and um, really well executed and very emotional. Yeah, I think I have to pick The Midnight Library. So our first pick of the year. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I'm so sorry. I know I'm giddy, but this is very exciting for me. Okay, so our first favorite of the year for January is The Midnight Library. So February, also don't remember anything that I read in February. <laughs> I'm sure I'll remember once I flip through the spreads. Okay, so February, The House in the Cerulean Sea. We read this for book club. I loved this book so much. I'm already predicting that this is probably gonna be my favorite pick of the month, but let me remind myself what else I read. They said this would be fun. This is a nonfiction. Grown, that could be enough. One of my favorite romance novels I have ever read in my life. Yeah, I think it's gonna have to be The House in the Cerulean Sea. It was just so good. My heart. I actually really wanna reread this book soon. We've got our first two favorites. I'm gonna go through and pick all my top favorites before moving down because I'm already feeling anxious thinking about picking a favorite between these two. All right, so March, again. 
so long ago that do I even remember what I read in March? <laughs> Word Slut was our book club pick that I thought was okay. I gave it three stars. Winter's Orbit, five stars. This one might be my pick. This is a sci-fi and it's amazing and I loved it. Fierce Femmes and Notorious Liars was really good. Quite a short book. The Downstairs Girl, I also really enjoyed historical fiction. Oh my God, though. This month I read The Stone Sky, which is the third in a fantasy series that is one of my favorite fantasy or sci-fi series to have ever existed. And the third book was amazing. So I don't know how I'm going to pick <laughs> between, oh no, I'm going to have to pick between The Stone Sky and Winter's Orbit. I hate this already. Oh my God, how do I pick a favorite? <laughs> no. Oh no. Okay, I'm trying to remind myself that this isn't a comparison between the entire Broken Earth trilogy and Winter's Orbit because that would be no contest. It's just the third book in the series versus Winter's Orbit. But even saying that, the third book was really, really good. I really loved it. Oh no, but I loved Winter's Orbit so much too. Y'all, I'm almost gonna cry. I feel so sad having to pit these against each other. Okay, you know what? As much as it pains me incredibly deeply, I think I have to pick The Stone Sky because all of the books in this trilogy, including this third one, are just like on a different level when it comes to sci-fi fantasy. And at least it's a bit of a more even playing ground because Winter's Orbit is also sci-fi. And I did love it so much, but I think it has to be The Stone Sky. This whole trilogy and this final book in the trilogy destroyed me to my core, to a level that I have not experienced very many times in my life. So yeah, The Stone Sky. <laughs> this hurts. Oh my God. Okay. So my favorite for March is going to be The Stone Sky. I feel like I need a break. I'm going to take a sip of water here. Oh my god. Now it's April. The Memory Police was our book club pick and I loved that book. I also read The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman, which is beautiful. And that's all I wrote down for April. Were those really my only two five-star reads for April? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I read a lot of books that I rated pretty well, like three and four stars. Okay, well, as much as I enjoy The Hill We Climb, I don't think that it can compete as a book to The Memory Police, um, especially because it is a single poem, if a long form poem, but still, I really enjoy it. But I think it has to go to The Memory Police because that book broke my brain and I loved it on like every level. I highly recommend if you haven't read The Memory Police, do it. You won't regret it. And for May, we have The Little Paris Bookshop for Book Club. I did not enjoy that book. I gave it two stars. This is How You Lose the Time War. Loved that. The Cost of Knowing, also amazing. The Empress of Salt and Fortune was really good. Inside Out and Back Again and Other Words for Home, two middle grade novels. Oh yeah, okay. May had a lot of five stars. Okay, I feel like it has to be probably between The Empress of Salt and Fortune and This Is How You Lose the Time War? Question mark. Hmm, how do I pick a favorite though? Oh no. The Empress of Salt and Fortune is a fantasy, really beautifully written, really immersive, very interesting characters. This is how you lose the time war is sci-fi. The epistolary, is that how you pronounce it? So it's written in letters, suspenseful, and has really gradual world building. This is a sapphic romance at the core. And then the Empress of Salt and Fortune has a sapphic romance as well and has a non-binary protagonist in Chi. I'm so torn again. Oh no. Okay. I'm trying to think like, okay, if I was stuck on a desert island and I could only pick one of these two books to have to read over and over again, which one would I pick? And as much as I hate that, I think I would pick The Empress of Salt and Fortune. But that really hurts because this is how you lose the time war is amazing and I highly recommend. But yeah, I think I have to pick the Empress of Salt and Fortune. It's just like next level good. But so is, this is how you lose the time war. Oh, oh no. <laughs> now you'll understand why I needed a book bracket to pick my favorite, okay? <laughs> cool. All right, so that's May. Moving on to June, we have favorites for June. 
One Last Stop, loved that book, five stars. To Be Taught a Fortunate, also five stars, amazing. And that's all I have. I don't think I read a lot in June because that's the month that I moved. Yes, so just between these two, I think it has to be To Be Taught a Fortunate. I think I've read this three times now and I really, really, really love it. It's just, oh God, it's just so good um, on so many levels. And I really enjoyed One Last Stop. Again, one of my top favorite romance novels that I've ever read, really, really good. But To Be Taught a Fortunate, is like a favorite of all time sort of level book um, of any genre really. So definitely has to go here. Now that I'm looking at these picks and trying to think about picking between them, I'm starting to get like a cold sweat. So we have our first six. So we have The Midnight Library, The House in the Cerulean Sea, The Stone Sky, The Memory Police, The Empress of Salt and Fortune, and To Be Taught a Fortunate. Okay, so now we are moving into the second half of the year from July to December, and I'm going to try to move a little more quickly because I'm worried that this video is gonna be super long <laughs> if I keep doing it this way. So I'm just gonna use my Goodreads to quickly go through and pick these favorites. Also, because I don't wanna spoil all of the spreads in my journal. I'm pretty sure all the ones I've shown so far are in my half year flip through of my reading journal, but I am gonna do a full reading journal flip through in the new year, so I don't wanna spoil everything so that it's not fun anymore. So our options for July are The Prairie of the Orange Tree, House of Leaves, The Weight of the Stars, and The Galaxy in the Ground Within. And I think I would have to be picking... Uh, this is really hard again. I think I have to go with a House of Leaves or just House of Leaves. Sorry, there's no the. Just because it's one of the weirdest, most innovative books I've ever read. It's really creative. I can't imagine how much effort went into writing it. And it was terrifying and fascinating. And I felt like I was falling into an obsession with it while I was reading it. And it took me like nine months to read and highlighting and marking pages and flipping back and forth and mumbling to myself <laughs> while I was reading it and freaking out my husband. I don't know. I just think that it's next level and I really 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 enjoyed reading it. So I think for July I have to pick House of Leaves even though I read a couple really awesome books in July. This is the kind of book that I could see myself rereading like 10 plus times in my lifetime which I can't really say for most books that exist. Okay so moving into August and in August I had a really good reading month in August. Okay, so we have Disfigured, which is a nonfiction, uh, Redemptor, which is the second in a series, a YA fantasy series. The Night Circus is a fantasy novel. Watch Over Me is kind of like a paranormal contemporary. She Drives Me Crazy is a YA sapphic romance. And then the ones we're meant to find is sci-fi, YA sci-fi. And all of those were five stars. Okay, I'm trying to think about it again, like if I could only pick one to take with me to a desert island to reread over and over again for the rest of my life. <laughs> Which one would I pick? I think I would have to pick, in that case, The Night Circus. I don't sound very sure because I'm not. I think The Night Circus is my favorite of all of those. If I had to only pick one, maybe, sort of. I did really, really, really love The Night Circus. That was another hard one. I read a lot of good books in August. Okay, moving into September. So I'm picking between The Tangleroot Palace, which is a fantasy short story collection that was amazing and I adored. And then Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, which is like a dark mystery translated adult fiction. And then The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery, which is like nostalgia overload, beautiful writing. Uh, oh no. Okay, again, if I could only pick one to reread and reread forever on a desert island, I would have a lot of trouble picking, <laughs> but I think I would have to pick The Blue Castle just because there's something so warm and cozy and loving and nostalgic about it, even though it's not nostalgic because I had never read it before this year, but I just loved The Blue Castle on another level. So I think I have to pick The Blue Castle, okay. We're making progress. Time for October. The Picture of Doreen Gray, We Are Okay, Piranesi, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, The Yellow Wallpaper, Under the Whispering Door, and The Tenant were my five-star reads in October. I had a lot of five-star reads in October. Um, okay, so I think Under the Whispering Door automatically goes to the top of my list and definitely is being challenged 
by the other five stars this month. I feel like Again, if I had all of these books sitting in front of me and I had to pick one to take with me to a desert island, I think I would have to pick Under the Whispering Door. I think it has the most reread potential. The other ones are really good, of course. And ideally, I would be able to take all of them with me to a desert island. But if I had to just pick one, that one broke my heart in the best way possible. Okay, moving to November, Six Crimson Cranes, Rebecca, Empire of Wild, and the Inheritance of Orchidia Divina. This one I think I have to pick. Oh no. I think I have to pick Rebecca. Rebecca is maybe my favorite classic that I've ever read. So it feels fitting that it get top billing here. Okay, final month, December. And for those of you who don't follow me on Goodreads, you won't even know what books I read in December. So here you go. These are the books I've read this month. So I have My Heart is a Chainsaw, Comfort Me with Apples, The Chosen and the Beautiful, Wintering, Only Ever Yours, A Song Below Water, A Dowry of Blood, A History of My Brief Body, Moon of the Crested Snow, See You in the Cosmos, Firekeeper's Daughter, Amina's Voice, and Nothing But Blackened Teeth. I haven't written Goodreads reviews for any of these yet, so I'm working working off of notes that I made and my Copile spreadsheet where I track ratings and stuff. And to be honest, I haven't even fully figured out what I want to rate all of these yet, but comfort me with apples. I gave five stars. I'm not going <laughs> to give you too much insight into my thoughts. You can go follow me on Goodreads or add me as a friend on Goodreads if you want to see my reviews when I finally write them, which will be once Plantmas is over and I have any free time. A History of My Brief Body was also a five star read. I feel like Firekeeper's Daughter and See You in the Cosmos are kind of like on the edge, like maybe they're around a four and a half star to a five star. I haven't fully decided yet. I also really enjoyed Nothing But Blackened Teeth, which is a very short horror novella. I don't know if I would count it as a five star read though. Maybe I would. I haven't decided yet. And Comfort Me With Apples is a very weird short novel that is, well, it's kind of really hard to to, um, it's a horror, I would say, and it's hard to describe without giving away the twist, but it has a bit of like a fantastical element, sort of, maybe. Don't want to give anything away. And then A History of My Brief Body is an essay collection by Billy Ray Balcourt, who is a gay indigenous man from Alberta. Their essay collection was really moving, um, quite beautiful. You know what? It's not very typical of me to choose a nonfiction. And I did really enjoy Comfort Me With Apples, but I don't know if anything could beat out a history of my brief body from this selection. It was really quite a vulnerable and visceral work. And I listened to it via audiobook and I want to get a physical copy because I want to read the words on the page. There were a lot of moments that I paused and rewinded like four times to try to transcribe down a quote, um, to try to get down to the idea of something that Billy Ray Belcourt was trying to get across. And I would love to have a physical copy so I can just highlight the heck out of it. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was amazing. So if you enjoy reading essay collections, memoir-esque, essay collections, I would highly recommend A History of My Brief Body. We've done it. We have our 12 top picks. I can't believe it. We have The Midnight Library, The House in the Cerulean Sea, The Stone Sky, The Memory Police, The Empress of Salt and Fortune, To Be Taught If Fortunate, House of Leaves, The Night Circus, The Blue Castle, Under the Whispering Door, Rebecca, and A History of My Brief Body. And I feel like I've done a good job because looking at this list, I am literally beaming. I feel so much like my heart feels full looking at this list because I just love each and every one of these books so much. Now is the hard part <laughs> because I have to pit these all time favorites against each other. And it was already painful enough picking these favorites. I think the only way I'm going to be able to do this is if I try to do like a rapid fire, just like the first one that pops into my head when I ask which one's my favorite and just go with it without overanalyzing it. The first bracket, the Midnight Library versus the House in the Cerulean Sea. And the winner is the House in the Cerulean Sea. I don't have enough space. Okay. <laughs> Bracket number two, the stone sky versus the memory police. And the winner is the stone sky. 
I told you, I'm literally going with just my very first instinct so that this video doesn't drag on for like five hours. Okay, third bracket. The Empress of Salt and Fortune versus To Be Taught of Fortunate. And the winner is To Be Taught of Fortunate. That was a hard one. They're all hard, but I, I felt myself starting to analyze. Moving on to our next bracket, House of Leaves versus the Night Circus. And the winner is House of Leaves. That one might've been a shocker for some people. I really loved House of Leaves, y'all. It was a really cool book. Okay, <laughs> next bracket. The Blue Castle versus Under the Whispering Door. Uh, oh no. Um, I think I think my brain just short circuited trying to <laughs> pick a favorite out of those two. Oh no, they're both so comforting and lovely and wonderful, and I love them both so much, and this hurts. Um, oh, oh no. Uh, 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 oh, you know what? I think I have to pick under the whispering door, but that that's really hard. Those ones were really well matched. That made me so sad. Okay, last bracket. I need I need a breath for a second. I'm getting, oh, okay. Last bracket. I've closed my eyes so that I'm not looking at them and trying to figure out my answer ahead of time. Okay, last bracket. Rebecca versus A History of My Brief Body. I think it has to go to A History of My Brief Body. Whew, okay, I'm stressed. So we have our top six. The House in the Cerulean Sea, The Stone Sky, To Be Taught a Fortunate, House of Leaves, Under the Whispering Door, and A History of My Brief Body. We have two by the same author, two TJ Klune books here, which is wild. Clearly a new favorite author of mine. Fantasy, fantasy sci-fi, sci-fi, horror, fantasy, and nonfiction, essay collection. So <laughs> I have to pick my top three and I don't want to because I'm already stressed, but we're going to do it. We're just going to do it. I'm going to try to do the same thing again, where I just try not to think about it too much <laughs> and just pick a favorite. The House in the Cerulean Sea versus The Stone Sky. And I don't know. <laughs> It's hard because The Stone Sky is the third in a trilogy, and as much as I gave it five stars and I adored it, I would say the entire trilogy as a collection would win against The House in the Cerulean Sea, but does just the third book in the series win against The House in the Cerulean Sea? The answer is less clear. You know what? I think I have to give it to The Stone Sky. That trilogy, and I know I'm supposed to be just looking at the third book and not the whole trilogy. Even just the third book on its own is so next level. N.K. Jemisin, genius level. And I feel like as the third book in the trilogy, I mean, all the books emotionally wrecked me, but this third one had so much emotional impact and I was so connected to the characters that I feel like it also kind of passes the House in the Cerulean Sea even in the like character loving and like emotional impact part, which is what really makes the House in the Cerulean Sea so special is that like the characters and the emotions involved. But the Stone Sky wrecked me all and I love the characters. I keep analyzing it even though I already decided because <laughs> it's so hard, but it's fine. The Stone Sky, that is my pick. I'm sticking with it. Okay, next up, To Be Taught a Fortunate and House of Leaves. Oh my God, these are so different. To Be Taught a Fortunate is a novella. It is very straightforward. House of Leaves is a behemoth. <laughs> and impossible to get through almost. So trying to compare these two is so difficult, at least with The House in the Cerulean Sea and The Stone Sky, they're both fantasy, although very different types of fantasy. But To Be Taught a Fortunate is a sci-fi, House of Leaves is horror. And while I love them both, they're very different. And I do not know what to pick. Oh, <laughs> no. Um, I think... I have to give it to House of Leaves, which feels blasphemous to say because To Be Taught a Fortunate is probably one of my favorite books of all time, but so is House of Leaves. And I just feel like there's something so unique about House of Leaves and its re-readability. I mean, I have reread To Be Taught a Fortunate a couple times, but House of Leaves is a freaking tome 
masterwork and has so many complex ideas that I feel like I could spend a lifetime analyzing little bits here and there that are just added in a random footnote. And it very much appeals to my particular <laughs> interests and preferences. So yeah, House of Leaves. I might regret that decision. I don't know, that was hard, but I think House of Leaves. Okay, picking our third finalist here. So we have Under the Whispering Door versus A History of My Brief Body. And out of those two, I think I have to pick, uh, I have to pick, I think I have to pick Under the Whispering Door. As much as I really, really enjoyed A History of My Brief Body, Maybe it's just because I finished it so recently. I finished it just a couple days ago and I don't think it's fully sunk in yet. Under the Whispering Door was really emotional for me. It has to do with grief and loss of loved ones, family members, um, finding family and belonging, finding love for yourself and for others. And the like processing of grief of family members really hit me in the feels um, and I actually, I mean, I talked about this in my wrap up video for I guess that was October that I actually felt like it really helped me to like work through some of my like lingering um, pain and grief for the loss of loved ones um, that I lost a while ago, like decades ago almost, um, that I found it felt it was very healing and very touching and yeah, just moved me on a different level, I think. So yeah, under the whispering door. Okay. Whew. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So we have our three finalists, The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin, Book Three in the Broken Earth Trilogy. This is a sci-fi fantasy. House of Leaves by Mark Danielewski. This is a ridiculous tome of a horror novel with a lot of other stuff going for it. And then we have Under the Whispering Door by T.J. Klune, a standalone fantasy novel. Okay, now I have to pit those three against each other and pick a favorite. And I gotta be honest, I'm not looking forward to it. Not one bit. <laughs> okay, again, if I had these three books in my hands and I had to pick only one to take with me to a desert island to reread and reread for the rest of my days, nothing else, just this book, and that's it. I feel like that question skews me a little bit towards House of Leaves because it has so much going on and I could spend a lifetime analyzing it. So I'm tempted to pick it because of that, but that it would be probably the most entertaining over a long period of time. But I also feel like I would maybe lose my mind <laughs> if I was just reading House of Leaves over and over again for my entire life alone on a desert island. Sounds like a bad idea. I also feel like I would be frustrated out of my mind if I could only read the third book in the trilogy and not the entire trilogy. So again, maybe this isn't the fairest question. I'm about to break my pen because I'm <laughs> squeezing it so intensely because I can't pick. Uh, uh, um, oh no. I think this is really, really freaking hard. I hope y'all appreciate <laughs> experiencing my emotional distress like this. I think I have to pick The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin because that series is one of the most amazing things I've ever read. And that third book absolutely destroyed me. If you go back to my March wrap up video, I finished the book like right as I'm filming the video and I'm a sobbing mess because it just destroyed me on such a different level. And the ideas in that series and in the third book in general, the characters are so good. As much as I loved House of Leaves and Under the Whispering Door and it pains me to leave them behind, I think the stone sky has to take the crown. So we have our winner for 20, actually I'm gonna use my stamps for this to make it all fancy. Hang on. So, oh, that was like the worst stamping job I've ever done in my life. I'm too excited. <laughs> okay, so that was my book bracket. Again, I hope you enjoyed experiencing my emotional distress through the screen as I try to pick between favorite things. Probably one of the most painful things that I have to do in life is pick between favorite things. Hopefully this was entertaining. Hopefully it also gave you book ideas, book recommendations. If you haven't read any of the books on this page, I highly recommend. Clearly they were my favorite books of the year. I think they are all very worth a read. Please read them. 
Again, this is the probably the messiest stamping job I've ever done in my life, but it's fine. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun doing this as much as it was painful and very difficult. And I'm really happy to feel like I have a bit more of a definitive answer to what my favorite read of the year was. Plus, I feel like The Stone Sky deserves this title so hard. Such an incredible final book of a trilogy. I feel like ending a trilogy, any trilogy is hard enough, but ending a trilogy like The Broken Earth trilogy, which is so masterfully done and has so many different threads and is so deeply complex and deals with so many different issues, has a lot of different characters whose stories need to be wrapped up. It was just such a good ending. The ending was so good. And yeah, totally incredibly happy that The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin wins this award. Actually, let me, uh, award, what, what, what is this, the Oscars? Wait, let me get this book, hang on. Ignore the fact that it's covered in cat hair, but The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin, our winner. Favorite book of 2021. Such a good book, such a good series. Highly, highly recommend. If you haven't read this trilogy, please do it. Just do it. What are you waiting for? Honestly, doing this kind of makes me want to reread this whole trilogy. So maybe I'll do that on my break, who knows? And I just threw the book by accident, it's fine. So there you have it, my book bracket. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was so much fun to make. I'm very excited to make a video like this again in 2022. If you didn't see my 2022 reading journal setup, check that out. That was yesterday's plant miss video. And I'm gonna get going. Thank you to my patrons for your support. As always, y'all are the best. And I'll see all of you very soon tomorrow for Plantmas Day 11. Bye friends.